Welcome to workshop number five. This is the workshop for hydrocarbons and their conformations. So this will be naming as well as uh, Newman projections, chair conformations, etc. Okay, so for the first problem here, we have two uh, naming questions. First, we will derive an IUPAC name for the structure shown here, this hydrocarbon. And then we will derive, we'll do the opposite. We will derive a structure from the IUPAC name. So let's begin with the first one here. Remember the first step in naming a compound, the IUPAC naming system. First, we have to find that parent chain, find that longest possible chain. That's going to be this chain through here. Remember, it's not always going to be from left to right. It could be going any which way throughout the molecule. Okay, so the longest possible chain we have is this chain here. Let's count that up. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So our parent chain is octane, right? Eight carbon chain. Let's go ahead and number with our substituents. Well, first off, let's find out what substituents we do have. We have a methyl group here and a methyl group here. So we have two methyl groups. Let's write those down also. We have a methyl and we have a methyl. Those are the substituents we have on the octane chain. And let's number now to get a position for these methyl groups. Now we should start numbering on the left side of the chain because we encounter our first methyl group at three as opposed to at one, two, three, four. So let's we'll start on the left here. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so it looks like our methyl groups are on positions three and five. So let's update our groups here. We'll say three methyl and five methyl. Now, how do we connect that to octane? Well, we could say 3-methyl-5-methyl-octane, or more precisely and more correctly, we can say 3-5-5-dimethyl-octane. 3-5-dimethyl-octane, indicating that we have an octane chain, eight carbon chain, and we have two methyl groups, dimethyl, at positions three and five, okay? So there's the first one. Let's work the opposite direction now. Uh, let's draw a structure from this name here, 4-chloro-2-methyl-nonane. So the parent chain is nonane. That's nine carbons. Let's draw that out. And since we're drawing the structure, let's draw it nice and simply in a straight line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have a methyl group on the second carbon. So let's go one, two, and put a methyl group there. And then we have a chlorine on the fourth carbon. So let's go down to the fourth carbon. One, two, three, and four. And we will put a chlorine on the fourth carbon there. And there would be four chloro, two methyl nonane. If you want to put the actual methyl groups, CH3, CH3, on the ends of the chain. That's perfectly fine. A lot of people prefer that, just so you have all the ends filled in. But um, you can just leave methyl groups as lines as well. OK, so there's 4-chloro-2-methyl-nonane, a 9-carbon chain with a methyl group on the second carbon and a chlorine on the fourth carbon. Now for the next question, we're given two molecules and there are going to be three sets of molecules. This will be the first set. Okay, so for this set of molecules, what we have to do is determine if these two molecules are the same, if they are isomers, or if they are two entirely different molecules. Okay, so we should recall that isomers are molecules with the same molecular formula, but a different structure, different connectivity, right? If they're entirely different molecules, it means they will have different molecular formulas. 
And if they're the same molecule, they will have the same formula and the same connectivity. They're just drawn differently. Okay, remember we can draw molecules many different ways, just like you can draw a table many different ways, right? You can draw a table upside down, you can draw from the left, draw it from the right. There's lots of different ways to draw a table, but it's always a table. Okay, so looking at these two molecules, are they the same? Are they isomers or are they entirely different? Well, one way to do this is to uh, name, get the IUPAC name. And if the two molecules have the exact same IUPAC name, then they are the same molecule, okay? If they are isomers, they will have different IUPAC names, but they will have the same molecular formula. And if they're going to be entirely different molecules, they will have different formulas, okay? So let's determine what these IUPACs name would, uh, what the IUPAC names would be. Let's work down this first molecule here, and we can see quite simply, we have a one, two, three, four, five carbon chain, which is a pentane with a methyl group on the second carbon. Okay, hopefully you can see that. I'll put the numbers in here. We have a five carbon chain with a methyl group on the second carbon. So this would be called two methyl pentane. And let's go over to the other molecule here. We have a one, I'll put the numbers in also, one, two, three, four, five. Notice how I'm numbering closer to where the substituents are because we want to give those substituents the lowest number possible. So this is one, two, three, four, five with a methyl group on the second carbon. That's two methyl pentane. We have the exact same molecule, but drawn differently, okay? So this is one way you could solve this problem, simply by deriving the IUPAC name. Uh, another way you can solve it, which is my preferred method to start, is by simply picturing this molecule in your head and rotating these single bonds and understanding that all of these single bonds can rotate and try to overlay these two molecules so that they look the same, okay? So it's quite easy in my mind, uh, since I've done this quite a bit, uh, this is a good thing to practice though, simply by rotating this bond between uh, carbons three and four, we can get a very similar looking structure. Let me draw what that would look like over here. Okay, we get this structure right there. If we just rotate that bond between three and four, just twist it like a carousel, between one and three, the left side of the molecule, that's staying the same. We're just twisting this bond between three and four. And now all of a sudden our molecule looks like this. Then all you have to do from, <clears throat> from this position is flip the molecule over like a pancake. Okay, and what do you get? The exact same molecule that we have on the right. All we're doing is twisting the bonds, flipping it around, and it looks exactly the same. Okay, so in my mind, when I look at this, I simply rotate this bond to line up the carbon chain and then simply flip it like a pancake and see, yep, that's the exact same molecule because it lines up perfectly. So that's another way you could solve this problem. If you're good at visualizing things three-dimensionally or if you have a molecular model kit, you can always build a model to help practice that. But if you're not gifted with that skill, you can always just simply derive the IUPAC name Compare the two names, 2-methylpentane, two 2-methylpentane, two and see that they are indeed the same molecule. Okay. Let's do another one of these. Okay, let's compare this molecule here to this molecule here, okay? Comparing these two molecules, are they the same? Are they isomers or are they entirely different, okay? So let's go ahead and do the IUPAC naming system since that's good practice and then we'll try to visualize it after. So let's go ahead and highlight in red our longest possible chain, which would be right through here. This is one, two, three, four, five carbon chain with two methyl groups on the second carbon. So this is two, two dimethyl. 
2,2-dimethylpentane. We have two methyl groups on that second carbon there. Hopefully you can see that. Those two methyl groups on the second carbon, so that's 2,2-dimethylpentane. Let's look at the molecule on the right. Let's draw that longest parent chain. It's going to be right through the molecule here. One, two, three, four, and five. And we have two methyl groups on the third carbon. Okay, so that's going to be three, three. Three, three, dimethylpentane. So we have 2,2-dimethylpentane and 3,3-dimethylpentane. Those two methyl groups are shifting from the second carbon over to the third carbon. Now, does that make them isomers or entirely different molecules? Well, it makes them isomers, okay, because we have the same number of carbons in both cases. Same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens. And if you don't understand that, or if you couldn't catch on to it, you can simply write out the molecular formula for each carbon, for each molecule. On the left here, we have five, six, seven carbons. And then counting up the hydrogens, we have three on all of the end points, right? We have CH3s. We have zero there because that has four bonds. We have two here and we have two here. So altogether, we have five, 10, 16. C7H16, and we can do the same thing over here. Three, two, two, and zero. Again, we have seven carbons, and then we have five, 10, 16 hydrogens. So we have the same molecular formula with different connectivity. So therefore, we have a pair of isomers, okay? So these are isomers of one another, okay? And let's do one final example here. So for the final example, let's look here at this molecule. We have a long chain, looks like that. There's the first one. And here is the second one. Again, a long chain, methyl group here and here. Okay, so there's the two structures. Now, at first glance, they do look a little bit different. But remember, what we have to do here first is simply find the IUPAC name, compare the two names, and see if we have the same molecule. So first, we have to find the parent chain. Now, working through this molecule on the left in red, obviously we have to include this long portion here, and we have a few different options. We can either continue our parent chain all the way through, or we could go down like this. Okay, so we have two different options for the parent chain. And when you have two different options like this, you actually follow this little rule where when you have multiple options or multiple paths for the parent chain, you pick the one that gives the greatest number of substituents. Okay, so that's a little rule to remember if you have multiple options for the parent chain. Okay, and in this case we do. So if we think about the first parent chain, looks like this, going all the way across from left to right or right to left, that red parent chain gives us two substituents. Now let's look if we go down and across. Here we have three substituents. So this would actually be a better parent chain than the first one. Now you could also go off to the left on this final carbon. You could go to the left or you could go to the right. That'll give you the same uh, answer in both cases. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick that direction there and we'll call that our parent chain for the first one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. Okay, so this would be heptane. 
Okay, heptane. That's the parent chain. What do we have for our substituents? We have, circled in blue, we have a methyl group, a methyl group, and an ethyl group. Okay, so let's write those down. A methyl, a methyl, and an ethyl. Okay, now we need to number. Let's go ahead and number. Remember, we number giving our substituents the lowest number possible. So we will go like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This means we have a 2-methyl, 4-methyl, and 3-ethyl. We're going to combine the two methyls so that we have 2,4-dimethyl and 3-ethyl. And now we're going to combine everything together, alphabetical order, starting with ethyl over methyl. So it would be 3-ethyl, 2,4-dimethyl, heptane, 3-ethyl, 2,4-dimethyl heptane. Okay, put that right above it. Let's go ahead and try to do the same thing for the second structure. Again, working through the parent chain, we see that we have a very similar issue when we get to this point where we can either go up or we can continue to the right. Now here, I'm going to continue to the right because that will give us three substituents as opposed to two, just like in the previous case. So we'll call that our parent chain there. Now that's going to give us heptane. Heptane is the parent chain. And for our substituents, hopefully you can actually see those pretty quickly now. We have the methyl, the methyl, and the ethyl. And if we did go through number here, we would have 2-methyl, 3-ethyl, and 4-methyl. Okay. So hopefully you can see now at this point that we do have the exact same molecule. This one over here is also 3-ethyl, 2,4-dimethyl, heptane. 3-ethyl, 2,4-dimethyl, heptane. So in both cases, we have exactly the same IUPAC name, which means we have the same molecule. Okay. okay, now moving on to the next problem, we have a Newman projection problem. We have to draw the following Newman projections for butane, four carbon chain. And I should note that these are the Newman projections looking down the C2, C3 bond. So if we numbered these, one, two, three, four, Okay, we're looking down that C2, C3 bond. Okay, let me write that here, C2 to C3 bond. Because you could draw Newman projections down any CC bond. We could do it between one and two, between three and four. But for this question, it's considering that two, three bond. Okay, let's draw the lowest energy conformation possible. What would that look like? Remember for our Newman projections, we draw this circle to give us some three-dimensionality. Okay, so if we're looking straight down that two, three bond, that central bond in butane, both of those carbons are lined up right here. They're eclipsing each other. On the front carbon, there is a CH3. You could draw it facing up, you could draw it facing down, doesn't quite matter. Remember the other three groups are spread out. We have a hydrogen and a hydrogen. And now for the lowest energy conformation, what would the back carbon be look? What would the back carbon look like? Remember, the lowest energy conformation is when we have as much space as possible. So we're going to first off obviously draw this in a staggered conformation, where that back carbon is rotated in such a way that those groups are staggered from the front carbon. 
And the two largest groups, the CH3 and the CH3, would be opposite or anti to each other. They'll be on opposite sides because they take up the most space, so they want to be the most spread out. Okay, so this is the lowest energy conformation here. This is the staggered anti conformation. I'll put this here. It's the anti conformation. It's staggered. Okay. Anti refers to the two methyl groups being opposite each other, and staggered refers to the two groups, uh, to all the groups spreading out equally 60 degrees apart from each other. Okay. So we can have staggered, remember, and then we can also have eclipsed when the two groups are close to each other or eclipsing each other. Okay, so what's the highest energy conformation? Well, remember, if we want high energy, that is eclipsing. We don't want things to be eclipsing. That's very unstable, high energy. So let's draw some eclipsing lines here where these groups are right on top of each other, the front and the back carbons. And what's the worst possible thing we could have, the highest energy? Well, that's when those two methyl groups are right on top of each other, CH3, CH3. So the molecule, uh, just a molecule of butane, will almost never adopt this conformation where these two methyl groups are right next to each other. It's not going to twist like that because those methyl groups being close to each other is very high energy, very unstable. Okay, remember, this is why we draw zigzags like this. When we draw zigzags, this is just those carbons trying to spread out as much as possible from each other in the shape of a tetrahedron. Remember, each carbon has that tetrahedral shape. Okay, so very rarely you will see butane folding over that 2 3 bond twisting. If you can imagine that twist, we no longer have a zigzag. We have this trapezoid or bowl shape. It doesn't really happen, okay? We don't want these groups bumping into each other, these big CH3 groups, okay? So this is the worst possible confirmation we could have for butane. Okay. Put an arrow here for that one. And let's draw the gauche confirmation. Remember gauche? I'll also put here. So we can put sin. That's sort of the opposite of anti. That means on the same side. So those methyl groups are on the same side. So you could call this a sin Newman projection. And obviously it is eclipsed. Okay, we have an eclipsed Newman projection here. And for our Gauche Newman projection, remember this is when you have those two methyl groups simply adjacent to each other, but they are staggered. Okay, it's when you have those two methyl groups right next to each other, but they are staggered. So it is high in energy, but it's not the worst possible situation. If those methyl groups were right on top of each other, it would be even more uncomfortable for the molecule. It would be much higher in energy, less stable. But there's the gauche, okay? Staggered, but adjacent to each other, okay? So now moving on, uh, we are looking at a, a Newman projection, actually a double Newman projection. And what we're asked to do is draw a bond line structure from these Newman projections. Okay, so remember Newman projections, you're looking down a CC bond. So that means wherever you have this circle with a dot in the middle, you're looking down two carbons. There's two carbons eclipsing there. Okay, they're also connected. We can see the front carbons are connected with a CH2 and the back carbons are connected with a CH2. Okay, I'll put some arrows there. So those two CH2s are connecting the molecule. So hopefully we can envision, if we have two molecules on the left, I'm sorry, two carbons on the left, two carbons on the right, and then we have these two bridged carbons. That means we have a total of six carbons, two over here, two over here, two connecting them. 
So what we actually have here is simply cyclohexane, a six-membered ring, where we are looking from this angle down those two bonds. So this is our angle. This is our perspective. There's our eye. Our perspective in the Newman projection is we are looking at the molecule sort of sideways, right? As if you were to put it on a table and look at the molecule at the height of the table. We're looking at these two um, bonds on the left and the right, straight down them, where those carbons line up. Let's color code them. Let's put some red. Okay, all these red carbons are lined up with each other. And so we have this sort of double Newman projection phenomena where we can actually see both Newman projections at the same time. And this Newman projection is actually quite instructive as to showing you why cyclohexane, that six-membered ring, is such a stable species, such a stable moiety. The reason that these six-membered rings are so stable is because they have very low torsional strain. We can see how everything is spread out so nicely, right? We have all these staggered conformations all the way around the molecule. Everything has its space, so it has very low torsional strain, and there's also very little ring strain. So the ring strain and the torsional strain are very low in cyclohexane because all of the bond angles match very closely with a true tetrahedron. So it's almost as if these carbons aren't part of a ring system. They're very comfortable being in a six-membered ring because they really don't have to change all that much as if they weren't. Okay? So this is very instructive, being able to see the six-membered ring from the side and see how everything is nice and evenly spaced and see why that six-membered ring is nice and stable. Okay. Also, it shows you why that chair conformation is nice. We see on the back side of the six-membered ring, we have a peak going upwards. And when we have that happen, we have staggered conformation in the back. And we have this peak going downwards in the front which is why we have staggered conformation in the front here. So I'm gonna draw the chair conformation off to the side, right? If we have a chair like that, and we're looking down these two bonds, right? If we're looking down those two bonds, the front is kind of coming down, the back is kind of coming up. All together, we have a chair, but this is why cyclohexane adopts this chair conformation. It allows everything to spread out nice and evenly, um, very close to true tetrahedral arrangements. Okay, so for this question, we are given the structure of menthol. I'm sure you've heard of menthol before. Very common ingredient in a lot of food products and um, body products. So this is menthol, and we have to determine which of the two chair conformations is most stable. So we're going to draw both chair conformations and figure out which one is more stable. Remember, when we're considering the stability of chairs, what we're really considering are those 1-3 diaxial interactions. Which groups are axial? Which groups are equatorial? Okay, so let's draw our first chair. All we have to do to start is just draw some generic empty chair. Okay, so there's just a chair. Remember, wherever we have a vertice pointing up, 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 that means those axial positions are up. Wherever we have a vertice pointing down, those three positions, that's where the axial positions are, are facing down. Okay, and it always alternates. Axial down, axial up, axial down, axial up. Okay. And remember these hashes and wedges. The wedges are coming out towards you a little bit. And wherever you see a hash, it's going into the paper, into the board, whatever you're looking at. Okay. Remember the shape of a tetrahedron. It's a pyramid. Okay. So let's start off with just any generic group. Let's start up top with this methyl group up at the top here. And let's put it in anywhere we want. Okay. Because everything's going to be relative to that. So this methyl group is coming up compared to the molecule here. So I'm just going to pick this carbon on the tip here, and I'm going to draw the two positions. We have up and down. The axial position is down. The equatorial position is up. So I'm going to put a methyl group there and a hydrogen here. 
indicating that this methyl group is on this carbon and it's facing up, just like it is on our structure to the left. Okay, now is where we have to be precise because now we're going to draw the rest of the functional groups. Going clockwise around the molecule, we have a CH2 and then we have an OH in the up position. So we have a CH2 and then we have this carbon over here where we have an OH in the up position, which means we have a hydrogen in the down position. Going one carbon over, we have an isopropyl group a three carbon chain connected at the central carbon. That's in the down position. So let's draw the up and down positions. I'm going to abbreviate the isopropyl group IPR. IPR, that's one abbreviation you might see. You could also see it drawn like this. May as well just draw it now since I already erased it. So there's the isopropyl group facing down and then we have a hydrogen in the up position, okay? So looking at this chair, at this ring, we can see that all of our functional groups are in the equatorial position. This is as stable as the molecule can be, right? If all the functional groups are equatorial, we have zero 1,3 dioxyl interactions. Remember, the dioxyl interactions are going to be the interactions of the, of the groups that are in the axial positions. In this case, it's just hydrogens, okay? So none of our functional groups are in those axial positions. So we have essentially no 1,3 dioxyl interactions. If we were to draw the flipped chair, let's do that. What we're going to do is draw the chair in the opposite configuration, where the tip is pointing up to the right, down to the left. And we are going to keep the same carbons all the way around. So this carbon at the tip still has the methyl group, and it's still up. It's simply going from equatorial to axial. Now, this is something that's really helpful to build a molecular model kit for. If you're having a hard time visualizing how this would look, Building a model is a really great way to be able to see exactly what's happening here. And you can get really cheap model kits online. Okay, going down, we have a CH2, and then we have our OH facing up. I'm going to draw an extra long bond just so we can see it there. OH is coming up, and we have a hydrogen going down. And then we have a isopropyl group going down and a hydrogen going up. So now in this case, we have a lot of dioxyl interactions. The isopropyl group, the alcohol, and the methyl group are all in the axial positions if we flip the chair, which is quite obvious because all three were equatorial to start. So if we did a chair inversion, if we flipped the chair, then all three groups would be axial, okay? So obviously the more stable chair conformation is going to be the one in which all of these groups are equatorial, okay? Because we have essentially no one, three diaxial interactions. Remember large groups want to be equatorial. There's more space in the equatorial position and it's not going to be bumping in to those other axial groups Okay, in the axial positions, it's competing for space above or below the ring. The equatorial positions are kind of sticking out away from the ring and have much more space. Okay. Okay, so looking at the final question here of the workshop, there's four different structures, A, B, C, and D. They're all drawn differently, and they all represent cis 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane, except for one of them. And quickly, let's just discuss what we mean by cis. Okay, so we can either say cis or trans. And when we say cis, we mean that two groups are on the same relative side. So if we compare this dichlorocyclohexane that I just drew, both the chlorines are wedges, I'm sorry, both the chlorines are hashes. So we would call them cis relative to each other because they're both down 
relative to our position or away from us. They're both on the same face. So we could call that cis. We could also have two chlorines or any other group that are wedges, and it could be at any position. Let's draw this chlorine over here. Both of these chlorines are wedges. Okay, they're both on the face closer to us. Those wedges are coming out towards us. So we could call these two chlorines cis as well. Now, if, for example, one was a hash and one was a wedge, say I changed one to a wedge like that, then they would be trans, okay? They would be trans because they are opposite relative to each other. One is down and one is up, okay? So that would be trans. So cis, same side, trans, different sides, okay? And it's all relative. So with that in mind, which of these represents cis 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane? First, let's draw the structure in the top right. It's going to be a six-membered ring. And cis 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. So let's draw them both as wedges. You could also draw them both as hashes. Now, if it's 1,2, that means they're on carbons right next to each other. Okay, so that would be cis 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane, either both wedges or both hashes, but definitely on carbons 1 and 2 right next to each other. Okay, and you could draw them at any position around the ring, okay, as long as they're next to each other. Okay, so looking at the first structure, we have a chair here. The two methyl groups are indeed on adjacent carbons, okay? Are they cis? Are they on the same face? Well, let's draw the other parts here on each carbon. There's an equatorial hydrogen at this position, and there's an axial hydrogen at this position, right? <clears throat> These two hydrogens in red, Okay, I'll highlight these in red. I just filled those in. So now it becomes more clear because our methyl groups, we can very clearly see, are both in the down position, right? Both the methyl groups are below that hydrogen. They're both on the same relative face of the cyclohexane. So it looks like these are indeed both cis. What about B? B, this is a unique way to draw molecules. Typically, you'll see it more on the biology side of chemistry. Uh, we're pretty much just drawing the cyclohexane as a pancake and looking at it from the side. And we're drawing the groups below the chain straight down. And any groups that are above the chain, you just draw straight up. And here we can quite obviously see those two methyl groups are on the same face. They're both down. And they're both connected on carbons 1 and 2. So that would be cis 1, 2 dimethylcyclohexane as well. And what about the Newman projections in C? Well, looking at C, this, remember, when we have these double Newman projections, we're looking at cyclohexane. And remember, when we're looking at cyclohexane, as a Newman projection, we're looking down the CC bonds here, where we have two carbons. We have a methyl group on the front carbon, which is this one. And we have a methyl group on the back carbon. And we can see, I'll highlight the other atoms in red, compared to the two red hydrogens on the same carbons, both of these methyl groups are up, so they're both cis relative to each other. So that one looks good. And finally, let's do D. It must be this one. It's our last one. We have a hydrogen here that's axial up, and we have a hydrogen here that's axial down. Okay. Fill in those empty spots. And here we can quite easily see that we have a methyl group that's down and a methyl group that's up. Okay. So these are anti to each other. These are trans to each other. If we were to draw this using a bond line structure, we would have a methyl group that is hashed or down, and we would have a methyl group that is wedged or up. 
So these wouldn't be cis, but these would be trans relative to each other. One is up, one is down. So therefore, D is the correct answer because D does not represent cis, 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. Okay, so there's workshop number five on hydrocarbons. Um, the most important topics here are definitely the Newman projections and the cyclohexane or chair conformations. Again, if you're not fully grasping that, I highly recommend getting a model kit, being able to hold these structures in your hand, being able to bend the bonds, see what's actually going on is very helpful. Okay, the next lecture, we will look at stereoisomerism and continue from there. See you in the next one.